This is Dr. Balaji Vaidilingam from National Institute of Effectiveness of Hands Free Transnasal Humidified Rapid Insufflation Ventilator Exchange, Thrive, over the conventional face mask ventilation technique for oxygenation in patients undergoing electroconvulsive therapy, a crossover study. Electroconvulsive therapy involves pre oxygenation with 100% oxygen, followed by the administration of short acting intravenous agents and short acting muscle relaxant. The patients are ventilated by back and mask technique that is interrupted briefly during the application of the electrical stimulus. Thrive can deliver very high flows with a provision of dynamic positive airway pressure that can safely sustain apnea in short procedures like electroconvulsive therapy. The main hypothesis of the study was to prove that Thrive as a sole insufflation technique is non inferior to the conventional bag and bag and mask ventilation technique during the conduct of, of electric electroconvulsive therapy. The primary objective was to find the incidence of oxygen desaturation in patients receiving oxygen supplementation by Thrive technique and the conventional face mask ventilation technique during ECT. Comparison of hemodynamics, seizure duration, type 2 awakening, and any airway complications in terms of nasal trauma, hoarseness, pneumothorax, were additional points of interest between the two groups. This was a single center crossover study which was conducted at Nimans, Bangalore between December 2020 to August 2021 after the approval from the Institute Ethics Committee. A total of 201 adult psychiatric patients who met the inclusion criteria between the third and fifth ECT session were enrolled for the study. The study was registered with the Clinical Trial Registry of India. Inclusion criteria included adult psychiatric patients between the third and fifth ECT treatment session, ACF physical status one and two, age between 18 to 50 years, and BMO of less than 40 kg per meter square. Exclusion criteria, patients who are incapable of giving consent, ACF physical status three and four, Patients with severe comorbidities like congestive heart failure, ischemic heart disease. Patients with baseline oxygen saturation of less than 95%. Difficult airway, Malampati airway class 3 and 4. And patients who required second stimulus due to inadequate seizure duration after the first stimulus application. Face mask group, pre oxygenation was done with 6 liters per minute of 100% oxygen with normal tidal volume breathing for 3 minutes. Induction was done with intravenous thiopentone sodium in a dose of 1.52 mg per kg. And the patient's breathing was assisted with bag and mask ventilation. After isolating the lower limb with the NAPP cuff, succinyl choline in a dose of 1.5 to 1 mg per kg was administered. And following the cessation of succinyl choline fasciculation, a bite block was placed. The amount of charge and placement of electrodes was determined by the attending psychiatrist. The motor seizure duration was recorded. Following the complete cessation of the motor seizures, bite block was removed and oral suction was done to clear the secretions. And the patients were assisted with bag and mask ventilation until they regained their spontaneous breathing. The course of the procedure was same in the Thrive group as the face mask group. In the Thrive group, a lubo thrust collar was applied awake after explaining the procedure. And the patient was pre oxygenated with a Thrive flows of 30 liters per minute for a period of three minutes. Following the anesthesia induction with thiopentone of 1.52 mg per kg and succinyl choline of 0.51 mg per kg, thiop flow was escalated and maintained at 50 liters per minute during the apneic phase, during the ECT stimulus application, and during the subsequent seizure period. Once the patient regained the spontaneous breathing, thiop flow was de-escalated every minute by 10 to 20 liters. Oxygen saturation was monitored throughout the procedure and a saturation of less than 92% was termed as a desaturation event in both the groups. Intervention with bag and mask ventilation was planned if oxygen saturation dropped below 90% for 30 seconds or less than 85% irrespective of the duration. In both the techniques, baseline saturation, heart rate, systolic, diastolic and mean arterial pressure were noted. Saturation were noted every minute starting from the baseline for a period of 10 minutes till the completion of the procedure. Hemodynamic parameters were noted at two time points, type point 0.2 and type point 0.5. Type point 0.2 is the two minutes after the application of shock therapy, and type point 0.5 is the five minutes after the application of shock therapy. Seizure duration were also noted in both the groups. Time to recovery was noted, that is, from the cessation of the last motor seizure activity to the first conscious verbal response to command. All the patients in both the groups were followed for 24 hours post ECT for any airway, any airway complications like uh, nasal injury, nasal bleed, hoarseness, pneumothorax. This was the scenario in the Thrive group. A lubo airway collar was applied awake after explaining the uh, procedure to the patient. And the Thrive flow was uh, started at 30 liters per minute for a period of three minutes, free oxygenation. And following the administration of intravenous anesthetic agent and muscle relaxant, the flow was escalated to 50 liters per minute. And it was maintained throughout the procedure till the recovery of spontaneous breathing.
and this video shows the conduct of the uh, ECT with the with the thrive and the LIBO airway collar in situ. Statistical analysis was performed using our software. Quantitative data was presented as mean standard deviation, while the nominal data was presented as frequencies and percentages. Statistical difference of discrete data between the groups was tested by factory test. Longitudinal data differences between the groups was tested using linear mixed effect model. And the p-value of less than 0 0.05 was considered statistically significant. Results, the mean age was 31.5%. Majority of them were male patient. Mean BMA was 23.4 with a standard deviation of 3.8. Majority of the patient belonged belong to ASA class 1, 71%. And majority of the patient had a malambotic rate of class 2. Oxygen saturation. There was one desaturation event in the thigh group, and there was no desaturation event in the face mask group. And this table shows the mean SpO2 between the groups over the time points, 10 time points. Zero is the baseline. and uh, and uh, 10 is the uh, till the completion of the procedure. The mean saturation increased from baseline in the, both the techniques, both the face mask and thigh group. The mean saturation increased from baseline. But the mean saturation was slightly higher in the thigh group compared to the face mask group. The thigh group had a mean saturation of 99.45 with standard deviation of 0.3. And the face mask group had a mean saturation of 99.41 with standard deviation of 0.3. This table shows the analysis of SpO2 change by regression model. So as I mentioned, the mean saturation was higher in the thigh group at all the 10 time points with the statistical significance, except at time point one and six, in which there was no statistical significance was found. This table shows the mean map between the groups over the three time points. Zero is the baseline, two is the two minutes after the shock therapy, five is the five minutes after the shock therapy. So the mean arterial pressure increased from baseline in both the groups. And the mean arterial pressure in the thigh group was higher compared to the face mask group by 0.9 millimeters of mercury without any statistical significance. We found a statistical significance at time point five in which the thigh group had a map of 9.1 millimeters of mercury higher than compared to the face mask group by regression model. This table shows the mean heart rate between the groups over the uh, three time points and the mean heart rate increased from baseline in both the groups. The mean heart rate in the thigh was 1.5 beats per minute higher compared to the face mask group. And we found a statistical significance with, by the regression model at time point two in which the mean heart rate was eight beats per minute lower compared to the face mask group. ECT parameters, since it was a crossover study and the same patients were exposed uh, to the two different techniques, the stimulus parameters, dose of intravenous anesthetic agent, dose of succinyl choline, were same in both the techniques. CZ duration was uh, all, uh, slightly higher in the face mask group compared to the thigh group, but there was no statistical significance, uh, 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 which was tested by PAT test with a p-value of 0 0.05. Time to everything. There was also no statistical significance between the two groups with a p-value of 0.1. There was no complications in terms of nasal injury, hoarseness, or pneumothorax in both the groups. Study limitation, limitation, we did not perform the measurement of carbon dioxide by any means. Since the carbon dioxide accumulation can be a concern during the application of thrive, uh, there are a lot of studies which have done the measurement by tra transcutaneous carbon dioxide monitoring, but our institute didn't have this uh, facility of uh, monitoring uh, carbon dioxide by transcutaneous monitor. So we didn't perform this uh, monitoring, but even though we didn't face any complications since ECT was a short procedure. To, to conclude, Thrive is a non-inferior to the conventional bag, bag mass ventilation technique in ECT. Thrive can safely sustain apnea in ECT as a sole anesthetic technique. And so you can have possible operational advantage in the hands of non-anesthesiologists in the ACT suit. Thank you.